Yeah. What type of engine is that? A CPG Volvo. Yeah, I know. <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome back to my way out. <laughs> so real quick before we take a look at the layout, just to follow up from last month, Gavin Whiteman, you asked about the BC Rail rock lights and how to thread them through the bottom, so I'll just show you quickly how I did it. So you can see where I drilled the holes in the pilot, um, one on each side, thread the Rapido leads through. I put a little bit of glue here on, on each side just to kind of keep the lead from making its way down into the wheels. So it goes underneath the truck there, tucks under that air tank, and then the fuel tank, you don't even have to drill holes in it. The whole thing pops right off. You can take this whole fuel tank off, and the leads just go uh, underneath the fuel tank there on each side. Then they go into the decoder compartment, and you solder them to the tabs on the back of the decoder here, just following the uh, Rapido instructions. So hopefully that helps you out, Gavin. Uh, really not not hard at all. This is one of the easiest locomotives to work on. The shell comes off so easily and uh, there's lots of good access under here and having the decoder in the fuel tank makes it really easy to work on. So, Good luck with uh, installing your ditch lights. So we passed another major milestone down here this past month. Got the layout lighting is all done and complete so you can kind of see if you remember back some of the older videos this is the switch setup for the CP side lighting. So this is the CP side pot lights here, and these are dimmable. And this is the layout lighting main power, which powers up the two drivers. And then this is the 3200 string driver, and this is the 6500 string driver. And these are dimmable as well. Here's the two 600 watt installed lighting drivers. So they got a separate, separate 18 gauge line that goes to those dimmer switches over there, and that's a 0 to 10 volt signal that dims them. And I kind of made an oops in procurement. My test string of lights that I bought to test kind of the concept of dimming the, the yellow string and the blue string. Those dimmers work differently than these ones and I didn't kind of realize it at the time. These dim based on current and uh, the LED manufacturer, their dimmers bit work on voltage. So what happened was these LEDs, they are common anode, which I didn't know and they don't tell you. Um, in the specification sheet, but what that means is you cannot dim them the way that I was planning on doing it. So right now we don't have the color dimming. I kind of just have them hooked up in two banks. So if I'm working on one side of the layout, I power that one up, and if I'm on the inside layout here, so one driver is kind of doing one side and one's doing the other. My brother thinks he can kind of we can figure it out, and we'll have to add a few things, but we could probably get that dimming working. But as for now, I'm just happy that the uh, the lights are working, so you can see. There's the five um, feeders that go up to the to the ten strings of lights. So again, CP side pot lights, and these are doable. And then the layout lighting. So you can see it makes a huge difference uh, having that layout lighting working now. So much so much nicer to uh, to be working on the bench work. The pot lights really don't throw that much light at all, but this uh, the strip lighting is uh, incredible. I think it's like 1100 lumens per foot or something like that. It's close to that. So it's really nice and bright down here now. So this is looking down the layout with the lighting fully powered. Huge change uh, compared to last month without having the lighting. So just to show you how I attached the LED strip to the aluminum L trim. The L trim was stapled as I was talking about in the last layout update. It's just stapled through the back of it to the lighting valence itself. And then I used silicone to uh, secure the LED strip to the L trim. And I used a special type of silicone. It's uh, resistant to heat, so it should do fine in this service. Like some of the solders, it says on the instructions, they can run like 50 degrees C, depending on kind of how good the solder is. So you want to make sure you use a silicone that's uh, rated for above that at least. This is what I used. It's a Dow Corning RTV sealant, 786, and you can see on here minus 60 degrees to plus 177 degrees C. So we'll be okay with uh, using that silicone. You got to watch because 
like the Alex Plus, that stuff's only good to like 60 or 70 degrees Celsius. So you really got to be mindful about what you're uh, what you're doing when you're siliconing electronics. So this is just looking down uh, railroad east towards Lake Louise. And uh, as soon as I got the lighting done, I started working on the terrain because it's just so much nicer to work on now that you can see everything. So we've got the foam kind of roughed in, just the first couple layers. Some of it's not uh, finished yet, but just trying to get the whole layout sealed up so when I lay track, we can start running trains and won't have to worry about anything falling through. But we've got the foam done now, all the way down Lake Louise, this whole wall is done. And uh, down to the corner basically, um, with the Lake Louise campground there. So we'll just look the other way here, this is coming railroad west from Lake Louise. And we kind of got this Bath Creek scene roughed in. Still have to do a little bit here, but like I said, just trying to get the first layer of terrain down. So then coming around through Bath Creek, the uh, the grades come back down together. And then it runs as double track all the way over to the crossovers that divide, which are right here, and then off into staging. So that foam's all done and uh, ready for track laying. The first layer, ever, I gotta put a little bit more. I still have to add uh, another inch or so of foam along here. I want it to be at least the same height as the roadbed or higher. And then I'll kind of carve the topography into it. So as I was doing the foam, I came across a couple things that I had to finish. So this is uh, Bath Creek here. It's an actual place on the Lagan Sub where there's two bridges close to each other but not at the same grade. It's right before the uh, Trans-Canada overpass right near the Alberta-British Columbia border. So it's just a little creek with these two kind of bridges that are not very high clearance. They're just simple girder bridges. So we just, uh, using Google Earth, I kind of measured the creek and then just cut the roadbed out of some scrap ply, put some risers in, and uh, then I was able to finish kind of rough in the scene with the foam. So it's kind of cool seeing how some of these bridge scenes and uh, it's all gonna look when it goes together. So this is just looking west past the Lake Louise station. You can kind of see how the grade separation takes place there and with the foam in now you can kind of see a lot more how it's going to look when rather than when it was just uh, just a ro sub road bed. Pan this way. This is the little maintenance away yard at Lake Louise here and the chalet spur and then the triple headed signals and the, uh, the big turnout at Lake Louise. So just past the switch at Lake Louise we got the uh, Pipestone River so this one I've got kind of roughed in now too with some foam and uh, gonna go in after with with spray foam and kind of fill in the little gaps that are still exist before I carve the final kind of grade into it and there's some there's some more to add in here this this creek is actually only half full most of the time so the grade has to kind of come down and I've got it marked on there there's kind of a low water flow here on this side so Still needs a little bit of work there, but uh, it's starting to come together. A few hundred yards past the Pipestone River, we got the uh, Lake Louise Drive overpass here. And again, it's just roughed in, but I, fi I finally went and pulled the trigger and secured the, the bottom of this down and got it all finished. And then I just kind of roughed in the foam. You can see here on these lines, this is how far it needs to be carved down. Like the bridge goes back quite a ways to here or so, but there's there's a very kind of gentle slope on both sides as you can see there. So that's what I'm going to do. Just kind of roughing it in for now just to, so I can get it finished and get it closed up before I move on. And that's as far as I got just past Lake Louise Drive there. Um, I need to get some one inch foam so I can finish this. I made a mistake and this bench work ended up being an inch higher than it was supposed to. So uh, I got to get one inch foam otherwise I'll be carving down a lot of foam to make it fit in that little section there. So I continued on the other side and uh, another little scene that I finished the uh, the bench work for is this little Fairview Road crossing. It's just a single lane gravel road. Just a, It's pretty much a service road. That it's not, doesn't see barely any traffic. And the maintenance away guys use it a lot to uh, PK trains and also to get on the tracks um, just, just east of Lake Louise. So just look down here at uh, Grade level, try to save myself a little bit of time compared to my last layout. My road crossing was way too low and I ended up having to build it up quite a bit. So I'm going to start with my 
road just about pretty much an eighth of an inch higher than the cork. And that way, theoretically, when you go and put the, the wooden road crossing ties on, it'll just, you'll be filling in the gaps between the, the rail and the road and the uh, sub road bed, and then you can just kind of put gravel on this. So, I'm trying to uh, learn from some past mistakes I made when doing road crossings like this. So, this is where we're currently at, as you can see by the huge mess on the floor. This is, it's a set of intermediate signals east of Lake Louise. So there will be a, uh, a double-headed searchlight and a single searchlight on the other side. And the background of this scene is the Bow River, about, I don't know, 15 feet below track level maybe. Go up a little higher, we can see better. So yeah, there's the intermediate signals there. And this is the, uh, the start of the Bow River where it kind of kind of gently comes out and then it runs along the track for I don't know, maybe a thousand feet or so, and then it kind of disappears off in the bush again. So, should be a pretty cool scene. I'm just finishing it up. I've got a few more pieces to cut, and then I'll have. Uh, I'm just using scrap pieces of five eighth ply that's left over from the road bed to do these kind of flat scenes like this, and then I'll go and fill in foam kind of all around it and do the grade with foam. This is what I'm trying to capture. Um, getting that little bit of the Bow River that runs along the tracks there. And Google Earth is awesome for this, so you can see, you get really detailed overhead views of how to, how to try and capture these type of scenes, so you can see there, I kind of draw a line to help myself visualize what I should be, kind of the shape of the river and stuff, so the, uh, the aisle side of the bench work is down below here, is on the bottom side, and the backdrop side is on the top, so this is the backdrop here. Should be a neat little scene uh, when it's done, and it kind of plays into, it almost looks right with, even though the locations are miles apart on the layout, how the river kind of, it goes back into the wall here, but then, you know, eight feet down, it comes out again, and that's the Moran curve scene, so it kind of, it almost looks right, if you're looking down it, there's like continuity. So that'll catch us up to uh, kind of the present day where we're at with the layout right now. We're going to keep pushing ahead with the foam terrain on this side and going to do the river, the Bow River scene at Morant's Curve. Try to get all the foam done before I lay track. And then that way, once I get the track laid and drop feeders, we'll be able to uh, run some trains. So we're really looking forward to that. Still a few months away, I think. I still got to do a couple things like I'm going to paint the, uh, the backdrop's got to be painted blue and... Things are looking up here. We got, uh, we're finally getting out of winter. If you look up here in the window, not much snow left in the windowsill. That's a good sign. We're starting to see some nice weather here. So, probably going to cut into layout building time, but uh, we'll get down here when we can. As always, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.